Matt, welcome to Ospreys TV and welcome to the Ospreys. We're at the end of your first week of pre-season as backs coach of Ospreys Rugby. How are you settling in? Yeah, I thoroughly, uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. It's been um, obviously mainly a fitness focus, but uh, the last couple of days we've done um, our first couple of rugby sessions and I've uh, enjoyed the sessions, enjoyed meeting the staff and the players. It's been a, a thoroughly, uh, thoroughly good uh, first week. A bit like you know the... The 11 year old of the first day in the new school, you reported on Monday, John Slam Darcy issued with your, your kit bag in a new environment. You know, probably no matter how old you are, no matter how experienced you are, it's always a bit of a strange sensation. Yeah, it is, yeah. I must admit, it was a little bit on the Sunday night, thinking uh, almost that back to school uh, feeling. We had uh, obviously a five week break, and it's amazing every year how quickly those five weeks uh, go. So, But I've been uh, I've thoroughly looking forward to, to coming. So, Sunday night, if, if you're honest, there was that little bit of um, excited nerves and obviously coming in Monday morning, I was, um, you know, welcomed by everyone pretty pretty quickly. So I feel I've settled in uh, pretty quickly. It's obviously some familiar faces in the playing uh, group and the staff. And um, as I said, I've been uh, made to feel really welcome. It's probably a little bit of a strange transition that it was known for quite some time that you come into the Ospreys. You had business still to do with Cardiff Blues, resulting in an end of season to remember with Challenge Cup silverware. Uh, but how do you how do you balance the two roles, keeping focused on one job, perhaps whilst having one eye on what you'd like to do this season when you arrived at the Ospreys? Yeah, obviously, if uh, the truth be known, you you obviously keep a little bit of a sharper eye on the, on the Ospreys end. So obviously kept in touch with uh, people, a few people here and uh, looked at the results and obviously always knew that Judgment Day was, was coming up when we'd have a, a good look at each other as well. But obviously the nature of the game really, it's so uh, full on, it's so week to week that you don't really get a chance to take your eye off the ball and in well, playing and coaching is... If you do start looking somewhere else, then you get found out pretty quickly. So, my my full, full focus was was on the Blues, but obviously, I kept an eye on if uh, the Ospreys were on on TV and kept an eye on their uh, results and how they were travelling. And you look at the Blues, everyone when they're moving on wants to end on a high, and you don't get much higher than pick up silverware in the Spanish sunshine. No, it was fantastic. It was a it was a fantastic end to the season overall. Really, we had a a really good run of games. So we, beat Edinburgh away in a, a big game and then managed to get European qualification um, obviously beat uh, Poe at uh, the Arms Park on a fantastic occasion and then we almost I suppose the icing on the cake was that was that win in Bilbao and more so the nature of the win is coming back from um, 20 points to 6 down at half time and, and winning it with one of the last kicks of the game was, uh, well, it was a, dream, a dream finish really and uh, I've always been told that when you win something, that's that's your best memories, and that's certainly the case. It, it was uh, it was quite emotional actually finish uh, with the Blues, and uh, I loved every every minute of it there. But obviously, I've reset now and looking forward to trying to do this, uh, the same thing here. I've, I've come here to try and uh, make the same kind of memories and 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 win something. The talk coming out of the Arms Park is about using the Challenge Cup success as a platform to build on this season. You know, they certainly took that run in the end of the season with a bit of momentum. Osprey's in the Challenge Cup this year, we've had the draw, a reunion with Poe, Stad Francais, which obviously has some meaning for the Ospreys yeah. uh, with the quarter-final defeat last year. Worcester Warriors as well, almost a local derby, as near as you're going to get in European competition. Uh, the Ospreys been looking to build that same kind of momentum? Yeah, I think so. It's one of, it's one of those competitions um, that... Like you're excited to see the draw, and you know going to the south of France to uh, to Po, and then obviously massive, um, massive club in Stade Francais. They're the type of teams that you that you want to be playing. It they could easily be two teams that are in the uh, in the Champions Cup, and then obviously another benefit for me uh, was still I save five pound seventy on the bridge for that <laughs> for that trip, so I can. Um, you know, I used to coach at Worcester, so like personally, that's a good um, a good trip for me as well. The the competition to go back to that, uh, to go back for you is it's one of those you look at the uh, teams that you get and you take each game in isolation. Now, reality is if you come out of the if you get to the last two games of the group and you've got a chance of getting into a quarter final, then it whets your appetite as a as a group and you try and get to a quarter final. And it showed last year once you're in a quarter final, you get some momentum and it, it can easily kind of spur your season on so um, I 
honestly feel that the Challenge Cup also helps your league form because uh, it gives you some nice breaks within the season and um, you can you know, go into a fresh competition, have a little break from the Pro 14, pick up a good couple of wins and, and then you're back into the Pro 14 with some kind of renewed vigour, if you like. So as a, as a competition to get into the knockout stages, it's a chance to win silverware, but also it does complement the Pro 14, in my opinion. Now, Max Sherratt, backs coach to Ospreys fans who perhaps haven't followed the Blues as closely as some others might have or haven't followed your career. People don't perhaps like talking about themselves, but I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you to talk about yourself. You know, what can Matt Charit do? What will Matt Charit look to bring to the Ospreys? Uh, I think, obviously, when a uh, coach uh, comes in, you're always a fresh voice and, you know, there is a bit of a honeymoon period, so it's a fresh voice with some fresh ideas and a, maybe a fresh way of looking at the game. Um, I've been really impressed, genuinely, within the first uh, couple of days that I've been here, some really skillful players here, and I feel my job is trying to trying to unlock that. So, um, you know, I want to play a good attacking uh, brand of rugby. I you know, believe that you have to have more than one way to play, though, so obviously, hopefully you've seen it when the Blues have played uh, the Ospreys or later on in the season. Um, there are lots of attacking kicks. I, th I think there's more than one way to attack space. I think you've got to do that with your with the feet, with your feet and uh, by kicking the ball. Um, and really, obviously, we've got some really good signings uh, coming in and an exciting attacking team. And you know, my job's to try and unlock that potential and get us playing as a team as quickly as as possible. You mentioned the signings. You look at the Ospreys' backline. Be much changed this season to what it has been in the past with some stalwarts moved on. But signings like George North, Scott Williams, Alec Davis, players like Sam Davis stepping up to the plate, Owen Watkin, Keelan Giles, Dan yeah. Evans doing what Dan Evans does. There's a lot for people to get excited about. Yeah, there is. And, um, you know, that's where the game is at the moment. You need people who can unlock defences and the names you've just mentioned and some exciting young boys coming through as well. They can certainly do that. My challenge is trying to almost um, get them playing as a group as quickly as possible. So that's the challenge of every coach is on paper, that group looks very, very exciting, which it is, but can we um, turn them into a functioning group as quickly as possible? Can Owen Watkins and Scott Williams and Corey Allen in the centres get a relationship and start to understand how each other plays? Can we use George North in the right way? Um, can Sam Davis you know, understand how I want to play quickly? And, you know, that, that takes a little bit of time and it takes, um, you know, time playing together. So it's, it's not going to be a quick fix, but my challenge is to make it as quick as, as quick as we can, really. We talk as quick as we can. Northampton Saints on the 11th of August. That'll probably be too soon because a lot of the players we mentioned will probably be just starting off their pre-seasons at that time. But first weekend of September, Pro 14, when the team are out, can supporters perhaps start to see the shaping of something a little bit different or does it take a little bit longer than that even? No, I, I hope, like we, I've started this week, is, you know, there has been changes and as I said, it's not for me to come in and rip everything to shreds. There's been a lot of good work done over uh, a long period of time here, so it's keeping some of the good stuff, but also as a coach, you want to live and die by what you believe in, so it will be changing um, certain aspects, but I expect by August 11th really against Northampton Saints for, for my principals to come come out in the game um, and then obviously by the time we get to September we need to hit the ground running so um, yeah certainly by September but I expect some of the principals to be shown before that in the pre-season games and we've not got the Pro 14 fixture list out yet there's still a few weeks away but when it does come in will it be a quick scout down to see where the Cardiff Blues are and will that be a, a mental note for you or is it just another game? I've, obviously it won't be just another game because I've got a lot of friends there I think a lot of the players uh, there so it will be something that I look forward to because it's a good good way to catch up I obviously know their defence coach uh, very well, Richard Hodges as well so it'll be um, a challenge to try and break down uh, their defence but uh, it, Pro 14 is a, a fantastic league but uh, to answer your question yeah, you, you will look at the teams that you're obviously familiar with so, but in an excitement way not in, uh, not in any other way